G'day guys, welcome back to Steelers Nation Australia. I just got done I just, just got done doing my live. Sorry, I'm stopping my words, don't even care. Uh, that was a crazy game. The Pittsburgh Steelers right now are still alive for the playoffs. Playoffs, we're still alive. They won right down there, 30-23. You guys saw it all around America. It's Happy New Year's to everyone out there. You know what? That's what we should do. We're going to start with a, with a victory fireworks and also a Happy New Year's fireworks to everyone in America. Because the Steelers won and we still have a playoff chance. And also, also, I'm going to explain how the Steelers can make the playoffs. Radio. So welcome back to Steelers Nation Australia. Here's what you want to know. The Pittsburgh Steelers won. I'll talk about that in just a minute, how I'm feeling, how excited I am, how hot I am. But here's what you want to know. Here's the information right now. Here is the Pittsburgh Steelers' path to the playoffs. The Steelers had to win out. They had to beat the Seahawks, and they need to beat the Ravens next week. Now, two things must happen. The Browns, that can't happen. And they also need one, one of these things hap, hap, happen down the bottom. Now, Texans and Colts, right? Next week, in week 18, it doesn't matter who wins, Texans or Colts. If they tie, it doesn't matter. Someone's, someone's going to win that game, right? If Texans win, sweet. If Colts win, sweet. That is one thing that can happen. Next. The Pittsburgh Steelers need the Dolphins to beat the Bills or the Titans need to beat the Jaguars, okay? So, in saying that, pretty much only one thing needs to happen and you have two choices. That is Dolphins over Bills or Titans over Jags. Now, I understand it's the same scenario as last year. We had a few things go our way and then Jack Flacco and the Jets couldn't beat the Dolphins and they won and we didn't get a playoff chance. Same scenario. We didn't take care of business. And yes, Tomlin and the organization should have started Rudolph before. And, and Trubisky was an absolute failure. And we lost those three games. We can't change that. Let's be honest. We can't change that. So we need to see Dolphins beat the Bills or the Titans beat the Jags. The other one, Texans versus Colts or Colts versus Texans. It doesn't matter who wins. If one team wins, we only need one thing to happen. So this week we're going for, or well, next week we're going for the Dolphins and we're cheering for the Titans to win too. All righty. Now back to the game. Today's game was fantastic. The Steelers, I think, rushed for near 200 yards. Mason Rudolph, at this point, I would be a pretty annoyed if Mike Tomlin does go back to Kenny Pickett. It's nothing against Kenny Pickett. It's more you keep feeding Rudolph. He's playing fantastic football. Fantastic. Uh, let's go for the stats. Mason Rudolph was 18-24, 274, zero TDs, zero interceptions, and one sack. And also, he, he stays in the pocket. He's cool, calm, collected. He's got the arm on him. He made a big play to Pickens. He made some plays to De um, Deontay Johnson. He made some plays where he threw the ball out of bounds, and that was after the Nick Herbig sack and fumble recovery. And we went down to the goal line, and he didn't force the ball because he knew he had points. And that's the way you play to be to be a good um, to be a good game manager. The Pittsburgh Steelers they uh, put a picture up of Rudolph and the whole crew cheering. And this is it, man. It's a team victory. Like we don't we don't have to get into it's Rudolph over Kenny. But at the same time, I feel like Mike Tomlin he's got to go with the hot hand now. Rudolph has backed it up two weeks in a row. You've got to go with the hot hand. So it's good to see the felt. This this was after this was after the Bengals game. They've now beaten the Bengals. They've beaten the Seahawks. Let's win three in a row versus the uh, the Ravens. Okay, next, Najee Harris. That might have been his game of the year. Najee Harris had 27 carries, 122, two TDs, 23 lo longest. And Joe Warren had 1375, one TD, 23 longest, and, and 202 yards on the game. Najee today, I was a bit down on Najee. I've, I've always supported Najee from the very beginning. But last week, it didn't feel like that much of Steelers football. I thought he looked a bit slow, you know. Something lit a spark up in Najee this week. He looked fantastic. He was pushing guys off, running through holes. His legs never stopped turning. Uh, that one diving touchdown to the end zone, he was on his feet and crawling and jumping. Najee like this can be, it looks like a first round pick. He just keeps going. He's physical. Give him the ball. He gets hit by four or five guys. He doesn't care. The one-two punch with Najee and Warren, there still should st still should be no argument. To me, it's like, well, you've got one A, one B, and they start Najee for three carries, and then Warren comes in. And it's a good split because you had 27 carries of 13, and Warren's your guy in the backfield to get passes. He was four for four targets, uh, so 17 catches as well. 
Uh, Najee, I think, is is over a thousand yards on the scrimmage. Sorry, is Joe and Warren for the first time in a long time, like twenty uh, since two thousand seven or something like that. I don't know when it was, but it was a long time ago. Uh, what else have we got? Sorry, I missed a score too. Uh, what else have we got here? So George Pickens played a game too, seven for one thirty one, thirty seven, nine targets. Uh, Johnson and Pickens both had fumbles, but luckily enough, they went out of bounds. Frymouth was quiet last week, but played a good game this week, uh, 44 yards and 25. And even going to the defense, you know what? Shout out to Eric Rowe. He played good football. Um, this team has is a shell. There's no middle linebackers. There's no safeties. There's really no one left. You're playing with guys that were once plumbers like Miles Jack. You're playing with guys that were from the practice squad. You're playing with guys that are just pretty much putting on a, putting on a jersey number and wearing a black and gold jersey, and that's it. So this team has no one left for depth. Kazi's out. He won't come back unless we make the playoffs. Mink is still out. We don't know about that. Keanu Neal's out. Middle linebacker's gone. They're non-existent. There's, there's no one else there besides uh, uh, Eric Rowe, Sullivan, Mark Robinson doing snaps, Miles Jack, and Walker. These are blokes you wouldn't even heard of in the in the in the off in the off season or the preseason, no one there. So shout out to those guys too. Fantastic. Uh, Peterson played well. TJ Watt didn't get a sack, but TJ Watt's get, get, getting hold every single time. Uh, Nick Herbig too. Nick Herbig had a great game. Uh, he was playing teams, and so was Rodney Wilson he, uh, Williams. He was playing teams of eighty seven. But Nick Herbig round the corner. I think he had like one snap or two snaps. Not even sure, but he got the fumble, got the recovery. Set up a steal to be like 30. Uh, that's a wrong score. 30-23. 30-23. So Nick Herbig made a big play to to win, to win almost pretty much win the game. Who are we doing? All right, guys. Let's finish off with um, some talk about uh, Chris Boswell played well too. Three for three and three extra points as well. Fantastic. Pre- President Harmon had one punt. I'll say this though. I'm going to finish off and I'll probably do a live later on today. It's your happy New Year's. I know the Pittsburgh Steelers stuffed up. In case of they should have played when Kenny Pickett went down, they possibly should have played Mason Rudolph next. They went with Trubisky. They played him. He's terrible. He's awful. Um, Trubisky will will be cut next year. Mason Rudolph is now the story for the Steelers. It's about time he got a chance to prove what he is. And he's playing good football. So you go with a hot hand. We can't change that what happened. They lost against the Cardinals. They lost against the Pats and Colts. We can't change that. All we can do now is, is hopefully the Steelers beat the Ravens and then we watch two games where they might beat the other team. And then if Rudolph and this team go to the playoffs, if they can score 30 points, they've got a chance. They can they can beat the Chiefs. They can beat um, the Texans. They can be a rematch. They can beat um, the, the Dolphins or Browns. They can beat those teams. So it would be fun to see Rudolph have a playoff chance and take this, this ride. I don't know where it's going to go. But I want to see a chance, and we have that next week. So, anyways, guys, that's it. The Steelers win 30 23. I'm fired up. I'm happy for Rudolph. I'm happy for the team. I'm glad they got a victory on on um on Happy New Year's. And and speaking of that, so you guys in America, it's around your 7 p.m. now. And yeah, happy New Year's, you guys. It's it's my New Year's Day, and this is fun, man. So I appreciate all you guys in the chat, uh, live chat, and everything like that. It's been a fun time. Steelers win 30-23. And that is now nine and seven. We need one more game and we need two teams to try and beat some other teams. We need one. We need the Bills to lose or the Jags to lose. And we have a chance. I'll see you guys later.